One change from the book to the second film that shocked me was precisely at the very end of the film. At first I was having difficulty in weighing down in my brain the pros and the cons of this book diversion, but then almost immediately I felt that I really loved it. And it was the scene where the Emperor has now fallen and Paul Muad'Dib sends a message to the Landsrat fleet that's parked up in space above Arrakis. He tells them, I now control Spice. I am the new Emperor. I'm officially taking the throne. If you dare to go against me, I'll destroy the Spice and we all die. And in the book, I remember the Landsrat fleet was deadlocked with no escape. They had to comply and there was nothing they could do about it. And so Paul indeed became Emperor very quickly. However, in the film now, Paul says to the fleet, I'm Emperor now, bow down or suffer my wrath. And the fleet just goes, no, fuck you. <laughs> and the battle starts. They literally just start showing ships flying up and attacking. And at first my reaction was, what the hell, what are they even attacking them with? Do Fremen possess spacecraft? And they're really badass desert warriors? But what the fuck can they do in a space battle? Plus, is the Landsrat insane? They're willing to risk the destruction of the Spice? Just because they don't want the Emperor changed. And so, logically, I don't think it makes much sense. But even so, as a person who's been reading a lot of history my entire life, if there's one thing that I've learned, humans are most of the time far from logical in their behavior. Especially in situations like this one, where everything's on the precipice of just spiraling down into complete chaos. Situations like this are exactly the kind of moments where humans act the stupidest. And so, if the Landsrat fleet is threatened with complete annihilation, and from a random desert guy they haven't even known about until recently, do I think they would actually show their teeth and decide to be aggressive? Yes, I actually kind of do. I expect this lack of reason on the part of humans. And I think it made for an absolute bombshell of an ending to the film. Not only does it end wildly, but it also sets up the stage for the incoming Jihad that the Fremen will do across the universe. It sets the stage of utter annihilation between the first and second books. Because at the beginning of the second book, Dune Messiah, Paul Atreides is a completely different person. And he's different in that, ironically, in contrast to the title of the book, he's actually no longer a messiah. He's a genocidal maniac that has caused the death of millions of people through the power of fanaticism. And all he has left in his mind is sheer regret. So yeah, ultimately, I loved that plot twist. Paul just wanting to take the throne and the rest of the Empire saying fuck no. It, it reminds me of this anecdote of when Philip II of Macedon, this is the father of uh, Alexander the Great, he went on to try and conquer Sparta and he was like, if I take your city I'll burn the crops and pillage and rape all your women. And the Spartans only sent back one word in reply, if. <laughs> <laughs> which is like which is like one of the most iconic anecdotes from ancient history. So thank you Team Dune for making this awesome film and coming up with this change. I absolutely adore it.